My prediction for gold has already come true many times over this year. And it's a prediction that I was hoping I would be wrong about because I do like to also uh, be very transparent and uh, admit when I'm wrong, which is probably more often than when I'm right. However, this is something we should get used to now because I'm going to make a prediction that we're going to be used to a right around $2,000 gold, maybe even higher through the end of the year. When I tell you what central banks are doing with gold, that's going to get us there. Let's explore. <laughs> Watch the central banks, folks. In fact, I think that we should do what the central banks do and continue to accumulate gold, at least some of it, through this time, even with prices being up. Yeah. In other words, you got to kind of uh, take into account where the prices are, take into account premiums, also take into account your budget. What does your budget say you should do uh, from one time to the next about gold, uh, you know, in terms of where your budget lies, what the prices are going to be doing. And those are the kind of things you got to take into account here. Because, folks, I believe it's going to just go higher from here. We'll see some dips, but it's not going to be by much. In fact, the data that, I, that I'm recording this video, gold is actually down a little bit. But I'm going to be referencing a piece here from UBS. Um, about uh, central bank gold purchases and what they have been doing. Uh, in fact, what happened in 2022, they broke a record. The highest on record in 2022. And if you look through a chart going way back in time to 1950, yeah, we're seeing a gold, gold acquisition by central banks at a higher level in 2022 than at any time since 1950. In fact, the accumulation of gold throughout is the highest since 1967 is another year, which sticks out, you know, in terms of the acquisition during that time. Um, and this is a remarkable thing to see for sure. Uh, movement into the uh, plus column for these uh, vaults that central banks hold. And know that gold prices are up about 9.4% uh, up to this year helped by solid central bank demand and financial investors returning to the market. Central bank gold purchases hit the highest level on record last year with recent surveys suggesting they will keep on buying gold this year too. There was a forecast that UBS uh, made that gold prices will touch about $2,200 by the end of March of 2024. And they're recommending holding gold as a portfolio hedge. And I think that's a rather tepid uh, call and prediction for gold by the end of March of 2024, $2,200. I think $2,500 is much more realistic. You've heard me talk about that too in a prior video. But spot gold now is trading just under $2,000 an ounce as I've recorded this video. And it's still within spinning distance. You've heard me use that term before too. When it reached around $2,070, back in August of 2020. A key feature of the rally has been solid central bank demand and financial investors returning to the market and exchange traded funds, plus futures and option markets, all according to the strongest demand in over a year. March was the first month of net inflows from ETFs in almost a year. Traditionally, central bank demand is considered second order price driver. That's right. That's what it's usually considered because when you think about the whole grand scheme of the amount of gold that flows to the markets, central bank buying is really a small driver. Uh, it actively rarely meets the same scales of flows related to ETFs, hedge funds, and other investment demand. By the way, those are just providing you exposure to the price, but there's got to be some gold backing those markets up and and that is a much larger market than what usually meets for uh, central bank buying. But this changed in 2022. Central bank buying was strong last year and marked the 13th consecutive year of net purchases and the highest level of annual demand on record going back to 1950. 
The amount of gold bought by central banks rose by 152% year over year in 2022 to 1,136 tons, uh, according to the World Gold Council. Central bank's share of total demand was 23% in 2022 versus 8 to 14% between 2011 and 2019. But will that behavior continue? According to HSBC Reserve Management Trends survey published by Central Banking Publications, central banks will likely keep buying gold this year too. An annual poll of 83 central banks, which manage a combined $7 trillion in foreign exchange assets, found that more than two-thirds of respondents thought their peers would increase their gold holdings in 2023. Two-thirds. Most reserve managers surveyed rated geopolitical risk and high inflation as their two top concerns. And that's with gold sitting near $2,000 an ounce. And if they got to pay that, or at least some of that, whenever, whenever they go to accumulate this uh, precious metal, and so therefore, you know, they're, they're willing to pay that high price because they know that in the end, that high price is better than being left in the bag with high inflation. In fact, we're seeing more and more practical solutions by some even smaller nations like Zimbabwe moving to gold to fight inflation. We're seeing some states here in the U.S. make moves to fight inflation by recognizing gold and silver, by the way, as legal tender and, uh, and also maybe even uh, allowing their governments, their state governments, commonwealths, to invest in gold to protect and hedge against inflation. These views are similar to the World Gold Council's annual survey where central banks cited heightened geopolitical certainty, uncertainty, inflation concerns, and gold's ability to act as an effective portfolio diversifier as reasons for continued buying. Looking to 2023 so far, official purchases have totaled more than 120 metric tons, which at this pace would see annual purchases total around 750 metric tons. While this represents a slowdown in the pace of buying, this level, if reached, would be the second highest in history after last year's record of, again, 1,136 metric tons. Reduced overall central bank reserves, a steep rise in the gold price and sales by banks based in gold-producing countries could curb some demand. But anecdotal sales uh, information, ongoing market-related uncertainties, and structural components like de-dollarization and low gold allocations as a percentage of total reserves in emerging markets all remain supportive. Yes, indeed. All good reasons, by the way, why we should be accumulating and holding on to the gold that we do have, at the very least, in these troubled times. There's a lot of things happening. Central banks know it. And as I said, watch the central banks. But even more importantly, be your own central bank. I did a video on that topic as well, too. And uh, I encourage you to check that out. I may post it at the end screen of this video. Very important video. But you, it's empowering to have gold in your portfolio in order to protect your wealth. And that's what it is. It's not just about wealth preservation. It's about wealth protection at this point. A highly defensive stance against an ever-devaluing dollar that's be, uh, growing increasingly under threat by the BRICS nations and uh, right out, straight out in the open um, defiance of the dollar hegemony. And that is kind of where we are. We stand. The dollar's not going to go away anytime soon. Gold is price in dollars. Uh, you know, it's, we're reminded of that every single day for sure. But nonetheless, gold still stands as being the true test of time and, and wealth preservation and being that store of value through uh, multiple uh, epochs, generations, and thousands of years of history have gone by. Gold has remained the same. In the near term, we think gold should likely remain sensitive to any short-term reversals in interest rate expectations, wider reaching deposit guarantees, and U.S. dollar strength. But with elevated uncertainty and recession risk, the downside risk to prices is a soft landing of the U.S. economy materializes or Federal Reserve hawkishness returns, which looks significantly less 
than the potential upside if another shock were to occur. In other words, what they're saying here is that the Federal Reserve could raise rates, and likely they will very soon, another quarter basis points, but likely that may be the last one. And even that rate hike may not push gold prices much lower than where they are at right now, which is just below $2,000 an ounce. Um, they don't have the effect that they did even six months ago or a year ago when we saw the prices get knocked down. And even that, the prices, especially of gold, were still trading, you know, uh, just a couple hundred dollars less than where they are now. When we're seeing gold here uh, in the high 19s right now, it's, it's no question that you know, more and more people are starting to get hardened to the idea that we're going to be have to get used to these high prices for gold. And I'm making that call right here, right now, based off of this news and the sentiment with central banks around the world, but also in terms of just the overall market. Gold is solidifying itself as being a very, very valuable uh, piece in the overall portfolio of what we're seeing uh, in spite of what's going on with Bitcoin and in spite of what's going on in other alternative assets. Gold is uh, never change and it never will. And that's what's so attractive about it. It doesn't pay dividends, but that's okay. We don't want that. We don't want the dividends. We just want the metal itself. That's right. With uncertainty likely to persist into the second half of the year, uh, UBS expects investor demand for hedges and they prefer gold as a buy in a portfolio context. And they forecast prices to touch again at $2,100 an ounce by the end of December and $2,200 an ounce by the end of March 2024. And those are very, very cautious, uh, bullish accounts for gold. Uh, I think it could go much higher than that. Um, and I'm one of those that likes to be cautious too in my predictions. But so far, my predictions have not come true for silver. But certainly for gold, I've been right the past two years. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I hope you found this video insightful, informative, and educational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.